Okay, so for this fly, I like to use the Umqua U660 um, in a size 12 with a hairline slotted bead, 5.30 seconds um, in gold, a tungsten bead. And so for thread, we're going pretty light with this because we don't want to build too thick of a taper. Um, and we'll kind of lock the thread in here and bring it towards the back of the shank. Clip the tag end here. And, um, yeah, we'll take thread wraps to the back and then we will secure in a little bit of CDL. Um, I like to use this uh, speckled dark pardo is what I like to use. Um, and so you don't need too many fibers of it. Um, People use like pheasant tail for tailing, um, often add extra because it'll break off. This CDL uh, will kind of bend instead of break and tear, so you really don't need that much. You probably only need about four or five fibers. You can do even less, to be honest. And because this is a, uh, you know, or at least right now we're using it for caddis, the tail's not super crucial. Um, but since this is kind of a general attractor, uh, you know, I do like to add the tail for other uses. So you don't need it that long. I'll just go about there, maybe a little less. Um, and yeah, and then we'll take wraps up to the front and secure these fibers. And uh, yeah, we'll cut the excess off right up here. And so, um, Next, we'll secure in some wire. I like to use this Uni Medium Soft Wire in neon, and the color is olive. Um, it's a cool wire that adds a little bit of flash. It's pretty bright, um, so I think it matches the color pretty well for this olive one. And so we'll take the red wraps in the back. I like to secure the end of the wire in the, the gap of the slotted bead. And then we're gonna build just a small taper. Uh, we want it to taper off towards the back. We don't need it too crazy big. Um, and then you don't wanna crowd the bead because you're gonna have to add some stuff up there. So if you have a bobbin rust, now we'll move our thread and take some wraps like this of this wire and kind of rib it on its way up like this. And then we will secure it off right here. So now for durability, um, we're going to add a little bit of, I like Solaris Bone Dry, some UV resin to add a little bit of durability. Um, I don't wanna put so much that I'm not seeing the ribbing from the uh, wire. So really just a little bit. And then if you use really thin stuff like this Solaris Bone Dry, it'll kind of soak down and cover the whole thing. If you put too much, you can dab it with a um, paper towel or a Kleenex, it'll soak up the excess. But we'll cure that real quick. And um, that will keep, you know, from any wear and tear from it coming apart. Um, the flies that I really like to use that get eaten a lot, I really want to make them last and not get too chewed up. So next, um, we're gonna put that little hot tag in. I like to use Glow Bright and uh, chartreuse for this. It's like a neon chartreuse is I think what they call the color. And to make like a thicker tag, what I'll do with this kind of floss stuff is I'll double it over like this and um, cut it and then double it over again. And that helps make it kind of thick. You don't need to worry if the ends don't look real good because we'll tie it in and then snip the excess. You can be kind of, um, I don't want to say lazy, but you, it doesn't need to be perfect when you put it in because we're going to trim it anyways. So I like to go kind of past that first piece of ribbing and then we'll, and we have the hook inverted because, you know, it's going to ride hook point up here. And so I like to give myself more than I need here. And again, it doesn't need to look pretty because we're going to trim it and kind of just make sure it's straight on the top like that. You can tell it looks pretty ugly right now. It's fine, we're gonna trim it. So we'll take this excess off. And then to kind of clean up this tag, we're just gonna kind of get in there with our scissors and 
from it. Uh, we don't need a huge tag. It's pretty bright, so it'll catch the fish's attention. Could probably even go a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, it's just a little hot spot um, to help if you're using it as a searching fly. So next, I like to use this Harry's Ice Dub Caddis Green. This is a super cool material. It's a little bit of you know just standard hair's ear dubbing mixed with ice dub. Um, I haven't used it a lot, but I've kind of made my own in a roundabout way of mixing dubbings in the past. So I'm kind of pumped that this exists. I didn't really know we had, that it was a thing. So I have been using this quite a bit for caddis pupa and other things. It's kind of flashy and still has that natural hair's ear look to it a little bit. And so just putting a very thin little noodle on right now um, not too much we don't need a lot because we still have to add a color CDC and I don't want to crowd anything so we'll just put just a little bit right there leave a little bit of space right here by the um, bead and so next I'm using the CDC um, and a couple tools to make this really easy because I'm gonna put in a dubbing loop is this hairline junior feather prepper you stick the feather in one of these slots and it allows you to use both sides of the um, CDC feather which is really nice because sometimes it's hard to get all of those um, you know little fibers out of a CDC feather so to make it kind of last and to get the most out of each feather it's nice to use some of these tools that make things a little bit easier and so um, the cool thing too about this feather prepper is it's got different length uh, slots and I kind of have been using these slots to gauge how big of a feather I need for what type of fly. So if you do have one of these um, and you're using it, you know, I like to use this third slot. Uh, it's about, you know, maybe a little, like an inch or a little more. And generally that size feather is what I use for a collar for a size fly that's about this big. And so now we're going to make a dubbing loop here. Don't need a crazy big one. Um, and... Uh, Kind of just leave that there while I prep everything else. And so a couple things make this easy. Like I said, this feather prepper, some sort of clamp. This is the Swiss CDC clamp that I'm using um, that I really like. And then just some wax and a dubbing spinner. I have this Umqua dubbing spinner here. And so I'll add a little bit of this wax here to hold the feather in. Um, There's nothing worse than wasting a bunch of CDC because it doesn't stick. And we'll put that dubbing spinner on here. Um, and then what you got to do is you got to put the clamp on the feather here and then you pop it out and then you trim it trim it off and then you can put it on so try to trim the center quill off and then here you take this CDC um, I normally like to do the thicker side up so I end with the skinnier fibers in my, when I'm doing my wraps. And then take that off. Um, and then when you wind it, the thicker you wind it, the tighter they're packed. We don't want it super tightly packed. We don't want them all to be on top of each other. So just enough to get it kind of spun up and bound up. Um, move this out of the way. And then we'll do some wraps with this for the collar. So this is why I wanted to leave space, because I didn't want to crowd this too much. And so that looks pretty good to me. It's a good collar that will drive the fish nuts, adds a lot of movement to your fly. Um, if you haven't tied with CDC, I recommend giving it a go, because there's a lot of different stuff you can do with it. It's pretty cool material. And so we'll trim that off. Um, pretty much done here. We'll just add a little bit more dubbing to secure the collar down around this. Uh, the CDC whip finish um, like this and it's done now you got your uh, really great like I said just general attractor uh, works super good during this granum caddis hatch something I always like to do is seal my thread wraps with UV resin with this thin solar res be extra careful not to get it on the CDC I like to just do one little drop in the slot of the tungsten bead. It kind of soaks in and it'll just lock everything in and here you go. Now you got a good, really sweet fly for right now for the granum hatch. Uh, you can do it in a variety of colors. Uh, hope you have fun tying it and let us know how it works. Thanks.